Hey friends, back in black. Still stressed out by that orange shirt video. But anyways, managing recovery from conditions like ME-CFS and long COVID in some ways can almost be simpler when you're really sick because you have very little energy and very little ability to do anything. So if you have 20 minutes of usable energy in a day, it's kind of easy, easier to budget that and figure out what you're gonna do with it. But it can be quite a bit trickier once you start to recover and you get more to that 70% and beyond all the way to full recovery, figuring out how to navigate your days and your weeks to make sure that you are not overdoing it and prioritizing your energy for things that are gonna help you to reach your goals. So this video is all about having a system to do that. Not a minute by minute scheduled approach for your day, but just an overall strategy and mindset and some insights and tools for you to use and remember as you're going through your days to help you navigate them so that you're not stressed by the idea of doing too much, frustrated or worried that um, you are not spending your energy on the right things and just getting through your days in a relaxed, as much as possible carefree way while still making progress on your recovery or if you're fully recovered, figuring out how to navigate your big, busy, full life once again without worried about setting yourself back or burning yourself out. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna attempt something that I've never tried before in any of my videos. There's gonna be props, it's gonna be messy. I don't know how it's gonna go, but at the very least, I think it'll be entertaining. But what I'm aiming for is something that will be a really solid tool and visual to help you really um, remember and solidify these concepts in your mind so you can picture this every day when you're going through your days. You're like, oh right, remember that mess <laughs> that Raylan made. Don't be a Raylan. <laughs> Okay, so this is all essentially about managing our energy and knowing how much more we can take on and how to take on new things and how much and how fast and how to not overdo it and how to make it all work and how to not be scared of the process. Because uh, it can be scary when you've had a condition where for a very long time, activity made you feel worse, even though you might you know, intellectually now understand that it is safe and you are okay, it's still pretty ingrained. So uh, it's understandable if it's, it makes you nervous as you start to take more things on and really have no idea what a safe rate for taking things on is. So we all have to manage our energy no matter what is going on with our health. A lot of what you hear about is pacing is actually just managing your energy. Here's how this has all gone for me. Tell me if any of this sounds familiar. So before I got sick, I had no concept of energy management or pacing. My whole approach to life was just to do as much as I possibly could every single day until I dropped and never reflect on any of that, never think about the long-term impacts, never even have enough awareness to know that I was doing it, never mind that there might be long-term impacts or that there might be a better way, and then enter chronic fatigue syndrome or ME-CFS. For me, it was almost overnight, got really sick, told my story a thousand times, I'm sure you know it already, I won't bore you with it. But then pacing became really bizarre. Initially, I still had no idea, no idea what pacing was and my energy became the most confusing thing ever. So this was my approach while being sick to managing my energy. I bet you this will sound familiar. So much of the time, it kind of felt like an elephant was sitting on my chest. I just, I couldn't move even if I wanted to. There was no pushing through this level of fatigue. I was just leveled. But then every once in a while, that elephant would get up and I would feel kind of okay and I would have some energy to do some things. So, in this window, I had no idea how long it was going to last. I just did as much as I possibly could. It was really exciting. So I would get up and I want to say do all the things that I had been wanting to do, but I couldn't do all of them, but I could do some of them. So whether it's, it might even just be laundry or cleaning up the kitchen, um, you know, talking online with friends, whatever. I would just go, go, go until that energy ran out and then the elephant would come back. And it felt like the elephant would punish me for everything that I had just done. And it would sit on me for even longer. It did too much. I see the elephant as the enemy. I think he's some big, scary, bad guy. But in reality, he's trying to protect me. And he's trying to teach me a lesson. I did way too much. 
He thinks that activity is bad, so he's gonna sit on me even longer to keep me safe and keep me from doing this again. So what this did for me and what I know this does for a lot of people is it gets us stuck in this sort of push crash cycle and it can make us worse and worse. We get some energy, we push too hard, we get worse. And then we get less and less moments of time where the elephant gets up and we get more and more desperate to use those times when they come up, making us even sicker, making the elephant even more determined to teach us a lesson and on and on it goes. But then fast forward and you start to get better. I started to get better. Maybe you're in that place too. You figured some things out. You've got out of that push crash cycle. You've got a bit more energy. And now it's kind of foreign territory. You're not really sure how to navigate it. And it gets more complicated here because this is no longer just about you know, teaching your nervous system that activities are safe and sort of reintegrating yourself into the world and slowly introducing more activities. It's also about learning what your very real limits are in terms of time and energy, just because you're a human being. And if you were like I was before you got sick, you didn't respect those limits or acknowledge that you had limits or have any sort of tools or planning system for ensuring that you don't go over your energy limits. So now here you are, navigating recovery, getting better, maybe almost better, maybe even fully better now, but you have no idea what a healthy person is supposed to be able to do. And you don't know how to add things back in a safe and realistic way because you've never done that before because old you would just say, sign me up. Okay, well, let's just start and just <laughs> make no plans to ensure that that is successful. Um, just somehow it will all magically work out. But if you're a human being, you have limits. Unless maybe you're Beyonce, I kind of feel like she has no limits. I think she can probably do whatever she wants. So Beyonce, if you're watching, you can turn this off. This video isn't for you. But if you're watching and you're not Beyonce, you have limits, very real limits. You might just think that you can pull out your brain training map and do your brain training activities and suddenly you'll be able to take on 100 hours of new activities. But that's not how it works. We all have limits. So how do we start to take these things back on and how do we know how much we can handle? Okay, so we're getting to my messy visual display of all of this very soon, which I hope will sort of solidify in your mind. Um, but let's look at an example. Let's say you have been unwell, you're starting to recover or you're fully recovered and you're like, I'm gonna go back to work. Let's say you're just gonna start part-time. Let's say it's 10 hours a week to start. That doesn't sound crazy. Before you got sick, you were working 60 hours a week. 10 hours a week is nothing. This is a cakewalk, not something that you should really have to worry about. But the reality is, is 10 hours is 10 hours. And what I mean by this is you, I can guarantee have built yourself up a full life right now. Your days are full, your weeks are full, whether that's with work or other things. It might be other responsibilities, other hobbies, other chores, um, just other things in your routine. So 10 hours doesn't magically materialize in your week just because you want it to. So having the plan that I'm just gonna start 10 hours next week and somehow everything will just shift around and it will just be okay is not gonna work. And if you go into it with that approach, you're gonna show up for those hours and you're gonna be exhausted and you're not gonna be on top of your life and you're not gonna figure out how to get everything done and you're gonna be overwhelmed. And at the end of the day, you're gonna be stressed out because there's so many things that you didn't get done that you wanted to or you were supposed to. And you're gonna feel like a failure and you're gonna think, what's wrong with me? This is 10 hours a week. It's not even close to a full-time job. I should be able to manage this. What is wrong? Okay, it's time to make a mess. So let's think about those 10 hours. If you wanna add 10 hours into your life, going back to work, you need to figure out what 10 hours you're gonna remove first. There is only so much time and space in your life and most of us, especially us go-getter, people who drive ourselves hard, have this attitude of like, it will just work out. I will just work harder. I'll have longer days. I'll make it work. Maybe some vague concepts of like, oh, I'll be more efficient at some other things. And but we don't know what things and we don't know how we're gonna magically be more efficient at them. So to set ourselves up to be successful, my dog is digging. Why is he digging? 
messy visual time. What does that look like? What does that mean? Whenever you're layering something new onto your life, whether it be a few hours of work or doing your own cooking again or joining a book club, whatever it might be, this is how I want you to think about it. My attempt right now is to do one of those visuals that Dr. Julie on Instagram always does. She does these spectacular things with all these props, smashing things and like blowing things up. I don't know if she blows things up, but she does a lot of amazing stuff and it really cements home what she's trying to get across. This is not gonna be that good. <laughs> but I hope it'll still be effective. Okay, see this jar right here? You are the jar and the water in the jar is your current responsibilities and your current activities. So right now you're here. There's maybe a little bit of wiggle room, hopefully in your life, but probably not much. Most of us just naturally fill our lives up. You're probably not just laying around every day thinking, I'm bored, maybe I should run a marathon. I have so much time and energy to spare. <laughs> so now you wanna add in 10 hours of energy and time. So that's this. We have this and it needs to now fit in here. And if you don't take anything out first, when you add in those 10 hours, this is what happens. Now imagine if I had done this in my kitchen. Dr. Julie does this all in her kitchen. I don't, I just don't understand. She must have her own cleaning crew. So there isn't magically more space in the jar just because you want there to be more space in the jar. You have to remove something, otherwise it's gonna overflow. And when it overflows, you're gonna feel like you're drowning, like you can't keep your head above water, you're gonna feel like a failure, and you're gonna be wondering, like, where did this all go wrong? So you need to make space first. It's all give and take, give and take. So what does this look like? So let's start again. Before you add in that 10 hours, first, you're gonna take some water out. You're gonna take some of your commitments out of your life. What does that look like? That looks like getting a dog sitter. There's one scoop out. There's ordering your groceries online and then getting them delivered. That makes a little bit more room. Maybe you set up a meal delivery service so your dinner is waiting in the fridge. It just has to be popped in the microwave when you get home. There's one more scoop, making more space. Maybe you hire a cleaner or maybe you just clean less, just lower your standards. If you used to clean every week, clean every second week. If you used to clean every second week, clean once a month, it will be fine. Stop washing your hair, use dry shampoo, put some hobbies on hold, whatever it is, Think about consciously restructuring your life to make space for that new thing. Because unless you're Beyonce, there's no way this is gonna work unless you do that. And when you're doing this, make sure you're getting rid of the things that are more dispensable so that you are ensuring that the things that are really important stay. Like whatever's important for you for self-care, getting enough sleep, doing your meditation, getting some early morning sun, spending time with your puppy, spending time with your family, whatever that might be. It's about getting laser focus about what's really important to you at this phase of your life and then putting your focus on that and having a realistic plan for how you're gonna make that happen. And all those things that you removed, they don't need to stay gone forever. You remove them to start, and then once you successfully for a while do that 10 hours of work or whatever it is, and life is running smoothly, then you can start to slowly, one at a time, add something back in. Maybe you think, I'd like to start doing my own cooking again. So you need to figure out how to do it more efficiently. How is it gonna take up less space in your life? And incidentally, uh, sneaky little plug, I have a meal planning course coming out soon. Take a look in the video description and you can sign up for my newsletter and you'll know when it comes out. So things like this can give you lots of tools and hacks so you reduce the amount of time and space and energy that this takes up in your life and allows you to keep more of these things in your life. And this isn't all just a guessing game. You're probably thinking, okay, this sounds good in theory, but how do I know how big of a scoop out of my water jar is you know, doing the cooking or hiring a cleaner? How much is this removing from my life? How do I figure out 10 hours? And you might also be thinking, I bet you are thinking this, I know you're thinking this, is that, no, no, I know. <laughs> I know how long things take me. I know you're thinking this because I have thought this and I've come to learn that I'm, pretty much your basic B and just like everybody else out there when it comes to most things in life. And when I've actually tracked how long things take, I consistently, significantly underestimate how long everything in my life takes. <laughs> so you need a concrete tool for assessing what to take out, what to leave in, how to put things back in. And I have a free tool that I've developed specifically for this. I'll link it 
in the video description. It's a very simple plan for you to look at your life and plan your life figure out how long things are taking, how much space things are taking, what your priorities are, what to take out, what you can leave in, and have a, a really concrete plan to use moving forward. And it's gonna have wiggle room in it. It's not a minute by minute plan for your days. Life is unpredictable. It gets very lifey and you need to have space for that. So this tool in the video description will help you sort out all of that. If you are fully recovered, this does not stop. Once you're fully recovered, I know it's kind of a depressing thing to think about. Like I have to do pacing <laughs> for the rest of my life. Yes, you do. And it's taken me a long time to realize this. And I had a really, really rough first couple of years once I was recovered. I thought that was supposed to be the euphoric, happy, blissful time of my life. After 10 years of being sick, the struggle was supposed to be behind me, but because I didn't have a plan like this for my life, I just went back to all my old habits. I brought back in all the stress and it's really kind of a miracle that I didn't get sick again. So take my hard earned lessons, do it smarter than me and have a plan and you will be okay. The best approach I've found to all of this is just to make changes slowly and to remember that you are still human, not you Beyonce. I told you to stop watching quite a long time ago. This is not for you, but for the rest, of us, it's okay to be tired and it's okay to push too hard sometimes and you're not gonna get it all perfectly and sometimes you're gonna need a nap and sometimes you're not gonna feel well and that's okay. It doesn't mean that your illness is back. It doesn't mean that you're failing. It just means that you're human. So have compassion with yourself throughout this process and be like, it's okay. I'm allowed to be tired. Anybody would be tired right now had they done what I'd done or had they not been taking care of themselves or whatever it might be. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you will really like this one that I'm gonna link up that is a more of a deep dive on everything that we're talking about to really help you conceptualize it all a little bit better. So hang in there, health star. You have totally got this. I thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you like the black shirt better than the orange one. And I hope to see you in this next one.